sprained my ankle three years ago. Is it gonna hurt? That's the home run. Perfect. Welcome to the office. Carlos, welcome to the office. What brings you in? What's up? Well, sprained my ankle roughly three years ago. Sprained your an right ankle? Yeah, I sprained my right ankle, and ever since then, I've had sciatica symptoms to my hip. Okay, let's rewind. What happened three years ago? Uh, I worked construction, so there was a hole cast in concrete, stepped in it, my ankle twisted, and I fell to the side. Her you fell on the floor, you fell, fell and it hurt yeah. your hip? Yeah. Okay, so right hip, right ankle, three years ago. Yeah. Pain meds? Nope. What did you do? Just deal with it? Just deal with it. <laughs> so rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Yeah. Rice or price. So, okay. And uh, over the years, the last three years, what's happened over the last three years? Uh, well, I was a foreman, so I had my job was a little bit easier because I ran a crew. Okay. But, you know, I would still have to get my hands dirty. And it was just, there was days where I would just lock up. I just. We're talking about your foot or your back now? My back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's a connection, right? You sprained your ankle, but you also fell. It's all connected. Yeah. And uh, there was no treatment sought or recommended, I'm assuming. And over the last three years, you're feeling more symptoms on your right side. Yeah. And what I mean by symptoms, you're feeling more of shooting pain? Uh, on my lower back, on the right side. Does it go down your leg? Not necessarily. My knee will pop, my ankle will pop, okay. even my hip, sometimes. It pops? Pop. Yeah. Okay, and I want to, you, you said, you mentioned sciatica, and I want to talk about that briefly. Because um, sciatica is a symptom, okay? Yeah. And what happens is a lot of people like to use it as a diagnosis. It is not a diagnosis. Well, it's in the medical. It, it is a diagnosis now. But the way I look at sciatica, it's a symptom. It's not yeah. telling me anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to the doctor. I have this. Oh, you have sciatica. Okay, what does that mean? You know, what does that actually mean, guys? Sciatica can come from the sciatic nerve. I've had at least 50... 50 sciatica cases getting fixed by a C3 adjustment, which had nothing to do with the low back. I'm okay. aware. I, I've heard you refer to it as a sentence and not diagnosis. Correct. And so we have to, we're going to be evaluating you in a little bit and figuring out what's the actual cause of what you're experiencing. So it's a little different. Um, yeah, so with sciatica, um, typically that says I have shoot, means I have shooting limbs. There's sometimes. Down the back. Not necessarily, life. but sometimes. Sometimes meaning a couple times a week, a couple times a month? A couple times a week. Okay. It depends on what I'm doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're still doing uh, construction, foreman? Uh, it's more labor intensive now. Uh, but uh, I'm taking classes to get my license. So. Good for you. Right on. Okay, so you can do your own thing, right? Right on, dude. Good for you. And you're coming from where? Fresno. Fresno. Okay, we got a bunch of peeps up in Fresno. And... Uh, you're here for the week, so we'll go through the journey this week and figure out how much we can help you. Awesome. Uh, but again, I'll explain everything. It should make a lot of sense what's going on, and it's just a matter of how you're going to respond to treatment. I may be seeing you twice in a day. I don't know yet until we start. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you're here Friday, you said, right? Saturday. Saturday. Okay, so we have a few days. Today is Tuesday. Right after Memorial Day, guys. And again, along the way, if you're uncomfortable, tell me to stop. If you have a question, just ask. Okay? All right. All right. Um, that's your main issue. Uh, yeah. What yeah. else? Um, my shoulders and my neck. And All of this after the... the, the no. no. You played ball in school? Football. Football. What, you, what position? Wide receiver. Wide, re yeah. wide receiver? Yeah. Oh, you got some speed. Right. Oh, back in the day. Okay. <laughs> okay. I wish I had that now. All right. All right, no worries. And they say uh, a wide receiver should have the memory of a goldfish. You heard that saying? Before? No. Yeah, because uh, 
memory of a goldfish is like what a second or three seconds they say that as a joke but not really it's like you know when you miss the last ball you don't want to think about that last one you want to forget about it and just move on make sense all right so let's forget about whatever whatever happened let's start this as your day one fair enough and is it easier for you to sit or stand to go over the x-rays Sit. Sit? Yeah. Okay, no problem. So what we'll do, let's go over the x-rays. Um, and I think a lot of it will make sense, you know, I'm going to be looking at everything. And we'll figure out what the priority is along the way. Okay? So this is you. This is a picture in time. We're first going to go over your full spine x-rays. After your full spine x-rays, we're going to go over your foot x-rays. Okay? And we do like to do extremity x-rays. He's had an old injury. It's been long-standing. We want to see what's going on. Uh, whether it's an ankle, a knee, a shoulder, an elbow, or a wrist, okay? Um, and that's based on the work that was taught to me by Dr. Mark Working, the late Dr. Mark Working, uh, Gonstead Extremities, uh, Gonstead Extremities. Uh, rest is so. Okay, this is you, this is a picture in time, tells me how you've evolved from birth. 24 bones in the spine that move, 23 discs in between. This is basically your 24-story building. In order to have a stable building, we need to have a level base and foundation, okay? And there's a lot of good news here too, by the way, okay? Three years, I'm sure there's scar tissue. I'm sure there's been some bony alterations with a sprained ankle. And you know, a lot of us, almost all of us, has, we've sprained an ankle at some point. And the sooner we get to that ankle, it was taught by, by Dr. Working, uh, he talked about the golden hour, and if we can get that sprained ankle in lieu of there's no um, vascular compromise, there's no neurological compromise, we get to it in that first hour, and guess what, healing is half the time. As it progresses, yes, it's gonna change kinetic chain, it's gonna change walking, it's gonna change weight-bearing patterns, and so it starts to alter, you know, not only the, the walk, but also the foundation and the rest of the spine, which is what you're experiencing. Now, let's go over this. This is, I said this is you, this is your foundation. Let's go over your foundation first, then we'll go to your side profile. And let's go ahead and zoom in. So what are a couple of things we see right now? Not too bad. We do have a little bit of rotation of the sacrum on the right, tiny bit. Um, AS, meaning it's gone up two millimeters on the right. Now, the way the pelvis works, one goes up, the other goes down, one goes in, the other goes out. Your right pelvis goes up a little bit, your left pelvis comes mm -hmm. down a little bit. I'm sure I felt that. Okay. Uh, right now, there's a three millimeter measured difference, meaning your left hip is three millimeters lower than the right. Still doesn't matter. It looks like an owl right there. Those are your, your buttons. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a little owl right there. Three millimeters is still under seven. Adjustments will hold regardless. Fixing your pelvis will bring it up one millimeter, which is also good. Okay? Now, as we go up the spine, let's see what we see. From the right side, I'm looking here. You can see this transverse here is larger. This one is smaller. And that's because the vertebrae has rotated. It's rotated to the left side. And that left side, it's actually very subtle here, okay? It's right there, it's a PLS. It's gone posterior left and it's wedged up on the, it turned to the left side. Now, what it does is it starts to take this with it, then you compensate to the opposite side. And you have a lot of compensation, by the way, which is understandable. As we go up, um, some bony changes, I'm gonna assume that's just a lot of hard work you know or, or football or whatever it is but now we get to the top here we start to see some changes um, T1 2 3 4 5 T5 I start to see a little different I'm looking at these circles here okay and the circles start to shift here and then we have a slight side slip at T4 1 2 3 T4 so T4 shifts slightly lateral. I'm assuming it's from a hit or something, whether it's the fall or, or sport. T4, there's a lateral shift, and that's what causes the neck to tilt, okay, and compensate. It tilts to the right side. And then what is it doing here? It has to kind of kink up in order to keep your head level. Make sense? Yeah? 
You see what I'm showing you? So from here, it's kind of tilting this way. Then there's a sharper turn at C7. It goes like this, and then it starts to straighten out in the upper cervical. You do have a little bit of swelling in the C1, C1 uh, capsule. C1 is shifted. Is that the upper right cervical? Side? This is the left side. So the atlas is shifted. We have an a, either an ASLA or an ASRP, depending on where we find the pressure. There's a shift, but I'm assuming also this is part compensation to what's happening down in the foundation, unless there was some sort of hit from right to left side. Uh, yeah, I can think of a few. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we have, going back to that, so we have upper cervical T4 potential. A lot of this is going to be compensation in here, okay? I don't want to focus on that right now. Um, I'm assuming we're going to start somewhere in the foundation. Let's look at your side profile. And you actually have a lot of good news here, okay? And the first thing is, let's look at your posture. And when we run the posture line from the lowest lumbar all the way up, it should go through the base of the neck, which yours does, and it should go through C2. It's off just a tiny bit there because there's a slight reversal of the curve. But you've maintained pretty good with what you've gone through, okay? So that's pretty impressive. I'm going to shift this line over so we can look down and see the tailbone and work our way up. And first thing I do see is a potential at S5 coccyx, tiny bit, not too bad. Um, this should be a smooth arc. This is good here. Then it's a little sharper there. Something You did have a slight tailbone. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, as we go up, your discs overall are great. L5, 4. You see this little indentation of the bone. It's called a Schmorl's node, okay? What's a Schmorl's node, guys? It's an indentation from the nucleus of the disc due to a lot of compressive forces. Those are those sticks, okay? But the discs are good. Five, four, three, two, one. Here's what I, I, I kind of don't like, though. You start to curve early. It's almost like our, my motorcycle riders, kind of like my Harley riders, okay? And I can see five, four, three, two, one starts that shift. It should come back a little smoother and curve. And so what we see is it's a little bit straighter through the mid-back. In your case, it's, it's how your body compensated to make up for the, whatever was going on in the low back. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Your discs are good. Your discs are good. Now when we get to the neck, it's like, why the hell am I in pain then? <laughs> I get it, dude. I'm showing you the x-ray. I still got to examine you, okay? And one of the misconceptions we, we have on the x-ray, we think the one that looks the worst is the actual problem. The one that looks the worst is the compensation. And the true subluxation or nerve pressure can be very subtle. When we look at your neck, C2, 3, 4, 5, C6 is tilted back, okay? C7 is too, though. And if we go a little bit closer, it's a little light in there. I have to get through your shoulders. But C7 looks a little bit whiter to me. C7 is a potential. C6 is tilting back, and then what does the rest of it do? It's starting to go slightly reversal. You can see the curving of C6. That's where you took a lot of the neck stuff that you went through. But the neck doesn't get fixed without T4, we said. So we have C7, we have T4, we have something in the tailbone. Now, the nerve that controls, or the main nerve to the ankle, one of the main nerves mm -hmm. is L4. L4. L4 is also tibialis anterior, which is the, the muscle that makes you dorsiflex or bring your ankle up. Okay, and we'll go through the test. All right, let's go through it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let's go through your ankle. When we're doing an ankle evaluation on the x-ray, we're looking at two different... Uh, views. We're looking at the A to P and we're looking at the lateral. And when we look on the A to P, the first thing we should see, good thing I have a right foot model, guys. That's actually pretty cool. So we're looking at the right ankle here. We should see a smooth symmetrical joint space. We see it slightly closed here, slightly swollen. It's closed on the inside, This, or sorry, the outside. This is the lateral side. This is the fibula bone. 
Now, there is a finding that this on x-ray, the fibula should actually be superimposed onto the tibia and talus. Mm -hmm. And we call this the fibula booty right here. This is where you can see that little crease right there. And that's the, that's long standing or there was a significant sprain. It's twisted. Oh, yeah. You see that? So it's twisted quite a bit and we were having a little issue in terms of you weight bearing on it. But what we can see is it's open on the medial side. This is where the swelling is. We have a AS, potential AS talus medial tilt. We have a posterior fibula that's rotated out. And so one of the things we're gonna to need to look at is also taping and or uh, doing some compression for you, okay? Does that make sense? That's on the A to P. On the lateral, there's a few things going on here. And I need to point out, this is long standing. We can see some bony changes going on. First thing we're looking at is the talus. And this is the joint line here. Open at the top, talus. Open at the bottom, it's going to be the navicular. Yours is open at the top. So we have the AS talus. And on the other x-ray, it's a medial tilt. It's been long standing, so it's gonna be fun, dude. You're already starting to get a little spur right there. You see that? It's gonna be spicy. It's gonna be spicy. You like spice, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, there's another thing we need to look at. So, talus major, posterior fibula. And let me see if I can get this line tool right there. So, we're looking at the calcaneus, should line up with the bottom here. And let's put another line there. So we have uh, wow. calcaneus involvement as well. The calcaneus is twisted quite a bit too. And let's draw a line there. You see that? So they should actually line up. Mm -hmm. Guys, what bone is that? Anyone remember the name of this bone? I'm going to put it out there and see if they remember the name of it. So we have AS talus medial tilt. We have posterior lateral calcaneus. You can see it's gem, it's gone back, right? Like this. So we're looking at it from here. I just gave it away by showing the bone. It's the cuboid. Okay, so they should line up like that. Yours is doing that. So we need to bring that also down. We need to we need to set the talus. Talus, it's that bone with the this is the outside, this is the inside. So this is the navicular bone, this is the cuboid bone. We're looking at it superimposed. The calcaneus and cuboid should line up, and the talus and navicular, the talonavicular joint should be a symmetrical joint. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be our focus today. Check spine, figure out where we're going to start there. I am going to start on the talus. We're going to have to use some lotion, and we're going to have to break up a lot of that scar tissue, dude. And not, not on the first one, but probably the second or third visit, I'm going to get in with the, with the gua sha. It's as much as you're going to let me handle, okay? Uh, we don't have the luxury of time, but you said you do have family here, so follow-up shouldn't be a big issue. Okay. All right, cool. Any questions on any of this? No. You ready to get started? Yeah. Showtime. So first thing we're going to do is let's watch his gait. Let's see how he walks. Let's tuck that in. And you're going to walk to the end of the room and back a few times, please. Go ahead and walk. Just your regular walk. And why don't we do a straight line this way, please. Just keep going. So you can tell he's, he's compensated a lot over the years. He's very stiff and rigid in his walk. I don't see good movement going through those dimples. You feel that stiffness when you walk, right? So we're looking here at the dimples there. And he kind of goes side to side because of the, the stiffness. Slow it down just a little bit. Okay, keep going. All right, come back over here and have a seat, please. Starting at the base of the neck. And the first thing we're getting is actually about 20 points, C1, left side. T4. T5. 
four, six points, left side. It's getting a little sweaty on me. Let's wipe it out. That's all clear. Getting it down low, 10 points, S2, but then it goes to that right side. So let's dig a little more. And what happens is it starts to, he's been compensating. So the activity looks like the left, but as we go down, it's actually the right, S3, S4, right side. Interesting. We got S3, S4, T4, and C1. Those are your three majors today, Carlos. Let's go ahead and statically palpate, looking for swelling edema, point tenderness. We can see as we run our fingers down the spine, you get that little orange peel effect there. T4, one, two, three, tender there. Five or four? Three, four. Let's continue on. So all this is inflammation, guys, and swelling. You can see it's all puffy here. It's inflammation. There you go, and you can see the pooling edema right there. You can see the orange peel effect there. And we're going to be right down low on that right side. Let's go ahead. Okay, come back slowly. That's L5. Sorry, that's L5, tender. And when I do that, he doesn't come back straight. He tilts to the right side. You feel that? Mm -hmm. Right there. You feel five, S1, S2, tender, yeah. S3. That's S4. That's what I'm getting. Oh. S2, S1, S2, S3, S4. That's what I'm getting. Right there. Yes? Yeah. S4. Sit straight the best you can. So he's also antalgic to that right side. So S4, T4. Scoot forward, please. There you go. And let's check up top. C1. Let's go on your back, please, over here. Let's check your ankle. Question I always get, is it gonna hurt? Slide up a tiny bit more, please. It's not about hurt, it's about maybe a little spicy. Can to come and look from the top over here? Sure. And so first thing is just the presentation of the feet. And you can see they kind of both go in. He's been compensating quite a bit. He does have a posterior rotated tibia fibula over here, which is also compensating. They're both compensating, okay? Relax the foot, relax the foot. And first thing we're gonna do is dorsiflexion, bring your toes back as far as you can. All right, as far as you can. And you can see that the left one does go further back than the right, okay? Relax there. Tender there. Yeah. Tender there. Not as much. Okay, so we have that component, which is the AS talus, medial tilt, dorsiflex, relax, let me do the work. So the way you're checking it is this, you know, is dor regular, let me do the work, don't help. Dorsiflexion, this way. Medial side, it don't move. Lateral side, moves good. Yes? Yeah. Fibula, you can, I gotta take this off, okay? I need them to see your fibula. And if you just look from the top here, you can see this side is more swollen than this side, right? This is all swelling. So we're gonna need to challenge the fibula. It's posterior, it won't go forward. Next is the calcaneus. So we said the calcaneus and the cuboid. You feel that? Yeah. Tender? Locked. Yeah. 
And so we have talus, we have fibula, we have the cuboid, tender, yes, and navicular, yes. Yeah. And then we're going to check the toes, and we have a drop third metatarsal head, and follow that down, tender, oh, yes. dropped. Second, cuneiform leading or predisposing to plantar fasciitis. All right, so we got some work to do. You ready? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to start with uh, the spine. Let's start with your atlas. Come over here. So we're going to start with atlas, C1. And then we're going to go there and do your tailbone, S4, T4. Have you walk. You'll tell me how good the ankle feels after before I even touch it. All right. Okay. A S R A. Let's bring it down a tiny bit. There we go. Feet out resting on your heels, palms up all the way up. Feet extend your legs out. There you go. Palms up resting on your thighs. Palms up. There you go. You sure you're a foreman, dude? <laughs> you give direction, you ain't taking it too well. I'm just messing with you. You ready? A S R A. That's a piece. Let it go down. There it is. That's the home run. Deep breath in. Stand up, please. Let's walk that off once, please. A little different, huh? That's like so. Uh, let's go ahead on the black platform there. We said we had T4 side slip. We're going to do that after. Let's bring that up a little bit. You good, Carlos? Yeah. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Let's get him up a little more. There we go. Slide up a tiny bit. Play foot. There you go. Relax the shoulders. That's the home run. Perfect. Nice. T4. Now for the side slip, I actually have to go to that side first. Slowly. Nice and easy. Okay. One, two, three, four. T4. Crunch. Now let's go to the other side. And let's get the rest of it. That's the home run day. Your dad's okay, don't worry. Step away from the vehicle and let's walk it out now. As you're walking, Carlos, tell me if anything is different. Anything different? What's different? On, on my foot. Less pain? Yeah. Moving different? Yeah. Walk one more time. Okay, and let's go back in the chair so I can scope you first. Old sprained ankle, threw off some spine stuff, but I'm sure he had other things going on from life. And let's make sure spine is clear. Neck is clear. T4 is clear. Uh, 
As far as clear, you remember what it felt like? That's one, two, three. A little different. Let's continue. Let's go on your back over here, please. Let's work on the ankle. So when we're doing the ankle, long, especially long standing, we're going to prep it. Um, you've seen me hopefully do some ankle work. You're tripping right now, aren't you? You good? Yeah. Okay. That's the, that, that lower back was, was a little spicy. A little spicy? So for the ankle, we're working with a little bit of lotion. We're going to wipe the periarticular swelling first, and the intraarticular swelling, and then we're going to probably start with a pull move. All right, so let's work the ankle. Three, two, one. And we just want to get that, equalize that joint pressure. Get as much of that swelling out as we can. Let that foot go, please. Five. If it's too much, I'll slow down, but I need to do this, sir. Three, two. Ah! Got it. Slide down a tiny bit, please. There you go. Dorsiflexion and A to P on the medial side. Dorsiflexion, A to P, dorsiflexion. All right. Raise your right leg. There you go. And we're going to do AS talus, medial tilt. Let it go. That's a little bit. Let it go. Talus, medial tilt, posterior fibula, bringing it forward. Go to your right, uh, left side. Calcaneus, cuboid. There you go. There you go. On your back, please. Now turn to your right side. This foot out of the way for me. Bring this up. Let's do the navicular. There you go. Let's walk that off. That's where we're going to start. Walk it off a few times. Definitely feel the change. Not too spicy now, right? No. Back's not too spicy now. Uh, right? Actually, yeah. I'm it's spicy, yeah. right? It's an old injury, dude. You're nice a lot. Okay. Keep walking one more time. And have a seat back over there. I will follow up with you tomorrow. I think we'll see you twice tomorrow. All clear. All clear. All clear. All right, brother. Now, shoulders and all that, I don't want to mess with today. And the only reason why, the focus is the spine and this right ankle. Okay? I don't think, I think the shoulders are, should fe be feeling a little bit better anyway. Okay. okay. Questions? No. Comments? No, I feel like the pain did shift to the left on the lower back. Okay, that's fine. And again, I moved that tailbone. Things will be shifting around. You will have some soreness. It's an old injury. And then you'll give us some feedback tomorrow. What's Mark. different? Fair enough? Yeah. Sir? Welcome to the office.